in the smart contract world, it's much more adversarial. When you deploy your code for your smart contract, whatever you put out there is permanent. What's up, everybody? How's it going? In this video, I've got a very special guest. His name is Patrick Collins. He is a blockchain engineer, basically a blockchain expert. We're going to be learning all about his background, what got him in the space, what he's currently working on, and I'm very excited. So on that note, Patrick, why don't you take a couple of minutes to introduce yourself. Who are you? What's your background? Sure. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Uh, I am a blockchain engineer, blockchain auditor, just lover of all things Web3. I've been coding in this space for a few years now, and I just I eat, sleep, and breathe smart contracts. I, I created two of the longest tutorials ever on free code camp to teach people how to code teach people how to get into web3 and learn this phenomenal technology before i was in web3 i worked at a hedge fund for a couple of years as a uh, support engineer and um yeah and i've just been loving the journey this whole time Ooh, okay so that last little tidbit of info that you that you dropped kind of leads me to my first question which is how did you become a blockchain engineer? Sounds like you were in non-blockchain software engineering before. What made you do the transition? Yeah, sure. So actually, so I, I worked at a hedge fund for a couple of years and I, I left there and briefly worked at a, a data API company. And at the time, I thought that blockchain and crypto was this stupid, silly thing that you could just buy and sell and you know hope you make a profit. I really thought the whole thing was really stupid. And then I got approached by a group saying, hey, we, we're looking to bring your data onto the blockchain, which didn't make any sense to me. I said, what, what, what do you mean put data? You can't put data onto money because crypto, I thought just crypto was money. And that's when they said, no, crypto has the ability to build and code programmable money and these things called smart contracts. And I was like, what? And then I fell down the rabbit hole and I learned all about the crazy things you can do with smart contracts. And it's just been downhill or uphill ever since, however you want to look at it. Um, but that's basically how I got in. And I, I went to a conference, uh, an ETH Denver conference. Uh, it was a hackathon. I sat down for something like 36 hours. I drank way too many energy drinks and I just learned Solidity in like a day and a half. And it just it's just been a blast uh, going from there. It's so funny. I feel like everybody who's in the crypto space usually started by thinking it was a scam or like only a way to kind of speculate and make money. Yep. And then they get their sort of like aha moment. Like yep. this is revolutionary. Um, it was similar for me. Like at first it was just, you know, a speculative, like, oh, maybe this is a lottery ticket. And then it's like, okay, wait a second. This, this might be like a bigger deal than I thought it was. One question or the next question I would have for you is what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis when you're a blockchain engineer? Because you worked at Chainlink Labs for at least I think a couple of years as a dev advocate and a software engineer or blockchain engineer. Chainlink Labs is one of the leading crypto projects in the industry. They're tied to the link token, one of the top 20, 25 you know, tokens out there. And so I'm just curious, what was your day-to-day -day life like? Yeah, sure. So for about two and a half years, I was uh, technically a developer advocate on the Chainlink project. I feel like that always does me a disservice because people go, oh, he's not technical. But no, I wrote most of the code that you use to learn how to code uh, in Web3. Uh, a big part of, of Web3 is just writing a ton of code as a dev, learning how to write code, researching how to write code. This space moves crazy fast. So like you're just always glued to, okay, what's the newest thing that's coming out for, for me to be better? Basically my day to day writing a lot of code and then I made a lot of uh, a lot of videos and I wrote a lot of blogs about the code that I wrote, which was awesome. But yeah, it's, it's writing a lot of code, working with a remote team uh, and staying up to date with the latest and greatest. Uh, I feel like it's really similar to just any developer job out there. You're writing a lot of code, you're working with your team, you're writing tests, you're staying up to date with the latest and greatest. If you're a front end dev, it's learning the newest JavaScript framework that came out last week in Solidity and Viper. It's learning the newest tool that's going to help you deploy and uh, your code. It's funny that you mentioned that the, the space is moving so fast because I feel like like we all feel it. It's like one day this is hot, the next day like it's completely obsolete. Uh, we recently launched Blockchain Expert on my company, Algo Expert, Woo! to teach you how to become a, a blockchain engineer. Woo! And uh, Patrick actually reviewed the entire course, which was super, super awesome. Thank you so much, Patrick. You can go check it out at algoexpert.io slash blockchain, promo code CLIMCLM for discount on the platform. But I remember we were thinking like, how do we make this course not be obsolete a year from now? And that's always tricky. Uh, the good news is that it does feel like the, in the, the industry is kind of, uh, or has at least consolidated a little bit around things like Solidity. Uh, but I guess on that, 
that note, like, what would you say differentiates writing code on the blockchain compared to writing code, you know, in, in like normal backends or no, normal systems? Like, is it really just ultimately the same thing, different programming language, or are there security concerns or things that you have to kind of think about that you normally don't think about? Yeah. So great question. So I worked, like I said, like I worked on the Chainlink project for around two and a half years and, um, and I'm still working with them actually. Uh, absolutely love the project. Um, but you mentioned security. I actually uh, left Chainlink Labs to start working deeper in the security space because yes, there is a much deeper uh, or I think deeper secure fundamental security mindset you need to have going into smart contracts. The difference between a smart contract and you know some Python or JavaScript program that you write is with your Python or JavaScript program, you pretty much have control over your servers. You have control. If you make a mistake, you can go in there, you can you know tweak it, whatever, uh, and you can quote unquote make it all better, make it all go away. In the smart contract world, it's a very, it's much more adversarial. When you deploy your code for your smart contract, it is immutable. Whatever you have deployed, you can't go in and just be like, oh, snap. Well, I forgot to you know, do this print line or I forgot to, I mean, nobody forgets to do a print line. I forgot to do this variable. I forgot to do this addition or something like that. Whatever you put out there is permanent. So if you deploy some code that permanently does something horrible, that's really bad. Um, the other big thing is that all these programs are free for anyone to read. So if you deploy a program that says, hey, like we're moving people's money and you are a malicious person and you find a way to move people's money in a way that benefits you, maybe you take it and you steal people's money and that's really bad. And it's a lot easier to do and it's a lot harder to reverse. Uh, which is also one of the the superpowers of cryptos because you know it, it's our money. You know we have control over what we do, what protocols we work with, um, as opposed to you know kind of tr traditional banks and stuff where whenever you go deposit your money in a bank, they have control of your money. They can freeze your money, whatever they want. So that's the biggest difference is you, when you deploy your code, it's permanent. And it's funny because like. I think some people will find that terrifying, the description that you just gave, but others will find it very exciting and, and even empowering. But it's really cool that you you have found this, this sounds like a deeper interest in the security aspect of the space in particular. I guess maybe walk us through what you are doing or intend to do with your new company or agency where you're gonna be doing security audits. Like, what does that look like exactly? Yeah, great question. And this is another really cool area if some of you are thinking about maybe being a blockchain engineer, maybe you don't become an engineer, maybe you become an auditor, uh, which is really cool. So what I was seeing in this space was a few things. Number one, it was it's getting very difficult for blockchain to go to the masses, go to normal people, because we see a lot of these hacks. We see a lot of issues where somebody deploys this permanent code and it's got a bug in it and whoopsie daisy, you know, $200 million down the tube, right? That is something that is going to keep retail at bay. And that's not good. So I said, okay, this technology is awesome. So I need to be part of the fight. I need to fight, make this place more secure. But the other uh, thing that I saw was scaling developers can be very difficult. Bringing developers to Web3 can be difficult because there, there is so much to learn, which is why it's great that you guys have your course. Um, and so I, I want to keep doing that. And if I want to bring more security, if I want to get us as an industry better at security, well, I better be damn good at it first so that I can go back and, and teach everybody security as well. But what we do, I went off on a little tangent there, sorry, what we actually do when we do an audit is it's a very, very time consuming process. So what happens is uh, the protocol will write all their code uh, end to end, then they'll give it to us and they'll say, here's what our code is supposed to do. Make sure it does that. And then we, uh, in a, you know, in a group of however many of us are on the project, we will go line by line through this massive code base looking for ways to poke it looking for hey, if you deployed this to main it how could we screw you over and then we say here's where we found the issues we give it back to you you make those changes you give it back to us we try to poke it again and then eventually hopefully we give you back some clean code and the tricky thing is sometimes you need to go through many iterations of that but that's the goal it's security auditors are looking for holes and they're helping make sure your code does what you say it's going to do. Basically, you give Web3 protocols and companies like the most important code review they'll ever have. In their life. <laughs> yes, it, that, that's exactly that. It's a security focused code review. That is all that we do. It's a security focused code review. <laughs> yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and yes, the uh, in, in traditional coding, 
you know, the uh, LGTM, you know, ship it doesn't fly. <laughs> you can't because uh, if you do LGTM uh, and there was a mistake in there, whoops a daisy, you know, two hundred million dollars down the tube. Uh, that's not great. Yeah, you can't just like YOLO those like last minute, <laughs> you know, five p.m. at end of the day LGTMs. Yep. Like, oh, I don't really want to review this. Yeah, but um, I guess on the the topic of bringing more developers to Web three blockchain, etc. What would you tell them is what you love the most about being a blockchain engineer? And what about what you hate the most? And hopefully it doesn't turn them away too much. Although maybe that's what we want. We want to filter out the people who aren't going to like it as much. I think one of the things that is just most inspiring about being a blockchain dev is kind of this ability to feel empowered and and, and take control. So there's there's countless countless examples of money being mismanaged by a trusted entity and it's it just it just sucks you know when i use the robin hood example when robin hood goes hey you're not allowed to buy this stock anymore who are you to tell me what i can do with my money that is insane you're cutting me off from financial you're cutting me off from this this economic opportunity um and so being in web3 and coding these programs really feels like okay autonomy is back with us and so it's, it's so empowering to be like, I'm going to build something where the power is with, with us. We get to choose what we want to do. And there's nobody to flip a switch and remove our access or flip a switch. And, you know, uh, the other day, um, some, some currency like devalued by 90% because the government was just like, yep. Yeah. So if you had, you know, $100,000 in life savings, just like that, it dropped down to $10,000 because somebody upstairs decided that's what they wanted to do. So it really just feels like you, we take power back. And that is my favorite part. The other favorite part is that it's it's this growing, it's this quickly growing, exploding space. And there's always new stuff. And you can like feel like you can get up to speed quickly. And it's 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 just really fun. And everyone's remote and and like the the di I'm sorry, you said one thing and I'm I'm popping off. It's no, hard totally to, fine. <laughs> it's hard to contain it. But it, it it feels like we're all kind of on the same page and it's a very collaborative space. Since we all know that in order for Web3 to scale, we all have to work together um, versus a lot of kind of traditional finance where it's very, very like uh, uh, anti-cooperation because if I teach you my trading strategy, you're going to go use that and steal my alpha, right? So it just feels like it just feels everything just feels better. I always say that the Web3 industry right now kind of feels reminiscent of the early days of the internet. I mean, I yeah. didn't experience those early days, but from what I'm reading, and I think the 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 extra thing that makes it even better is that right now, like everybody is already online. We are already on the internet, so we can already collaborate remotely. Like everything's happening on Twitter, on Discord, whatever. That makes it super exciting to me. But now what about the thing that you hate the most about being a blockchain dev? The thing I hate the most, to be honest, is probably the the stigma um, that comes with, and this is also one of the reasons I got into the security space, the stigma that comes with a lot of the bad actors. So because there's this brand new technology and not everyone knows how it works, uh, a lot of people, as you might have seen, have come to the space, pulled the rug out from somebody uh, just to make off with a quick buck. And that sucks. And it's happened a lot. And I'm sure it happened in the early days of the internet too. Um, but it really gives this space kind of a, a, a bad taste in people's mouths when they hear about, you know, when they hear about FTX, when they hear about uh, what's happening with Genesis, when they hear about, you know, any of these, what they call like rug pulls, uh, it, it, it's a bad, it's a bad reflection on us. And, and that's part of the reason why I got into security too, was to say, hey, we're going to look at, the, we're going to look at all these codes um, and we're going to not only see if it's more secure, we're going to see, okay, these are protocols that are actually good and doing good things and not here to screw you over. So that's probably one of the downsides. We're working on it. We're working on flushing out a lot of the bad actors, though. And I will say what's disappointing about that is that like, you see very smart people, especially developers who are well-intentioned, who get turned off by the space and disillusioned yep. by it. Like Even lately, whenever I mention crypto on my channel, I see a lot of people in the comments who are like, bro, crypto's a scam. Like, it's just a Ponzi, blah, blah. And like, you know, it's like we have to do a, a, a you know, we have an extra job of convincing these people that it's like, no, it's it's genuinely not a scam. There are scams in the space. And yeah. it is a, uh, a space that is very prone to scams because it so happens to lend itself to, to scams. But it also is a space that is prone to like tremendous, you know, revolutionary tag development and all that. So 
that's that's what I believe. Clearly, you you share that belief with me. I guess as a final sort of parting uh, piece of advice that you might be able to give to uh, viewers right now, what would you tell them if they do want to become blockchain devs? Like, what should they do? What should they look out for? And you know, just in a couple sentences. Yeah. So my advice there, it's going to be the same as any developer. Period. So number one is that it's okay. It's okay if you don't understand it the first time. It's okay if it takes you a few weeks to get it. It's okay if it takes you a couple months to get it. It's okay. That's how it goes. If you feel like you're the dumbest person in the room, that's usually an advantage. That means you have the most to grow, right? It's okay. Some of this takes time. It's new stuff. It took me a while to figure it out. Don't let that hold you back. Number two, you said a few sentences. That was already a few. Number two, imposter syndrome will happen. Do not let that stop you. Just by watching this video, you are welcomed in this space. We thank you. We want you to be here. Don't let imposter syndrome drag you down or slow you down. We all have it. Kick it. Move on. And number three, always be learning. Always be learning. And then I guess number four, have fun. Because there, it, this is a, a fun space. You will learn so much quicker and so much better if you come and you have fun. So th those would be my four pieces of tidbits of advice. Couldn't agree more, and I would even add on to the imposter syndrome bit that uh, it's very easy to get imposter syndrome in the space, even as an experienced dev, because suddenly you yes. feel like you're starting from scratch and you're learning these new concepts that you genuinely weren't exposed to before. Like there are certain paradigms in Solidity, for example, that are genuinely novel. Like you did not see them in, you know, Rust or or maybe Rust. Well, let's not use Rust as the example, you know, like JavaScript or in, you know, C++. And so try to not get that imposter syndrome. Listen to everything Patrick said. And on that note, uh, I will say like, go follow people like Patrick on social media. They're awesome motivation, great resources. I'll put all of his links down below in the description, in the comments, YouTube, Twitter, um, and uh, just try to try to enjoy. So on that note, don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Subscribe to Patrick's channel. Follow him on Twitter. Uh, if you enjoy short form content, follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Instagram if you like pictures. And I will see you in the next video.